Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. We are at Cycle Park in the mighty Minneapolis of Marnie, Iowa, and Baxter Cycle has been kind enough to lend us one of these beautiful motorcycles. This is the one that kind of gets lost in the wash with Royal Enfield because I think it's I think it's actually one of their better motorcycles. One of their they're all good ones, but I think this is actually one of their best all-around bikes. This thing kind of does everything pretty darn well. It is the Royal Enfield Himalayan Scram 411. Uh, so let's start with what it is. It's uh, got the same 411 cc single overhead cam, nine and a half to one compression, single cylinder engine that the uh, Himalayan has. The same transmission, five speed transmission. The engine produces about 24 horsepower and about 24 foot pounds of torque. That's about 32 newton meters. Uh, all that torque is way down low. So when I first found the Himalayan, one of the things that kept me from riding it, just even riding it, was I didn't think it had enough power. What I would say is, take one for a ride, you'll be amazed. Uh, they have plenty of torque, it's all in the bottom, everything's in the bottom. I think these bikes will go about 85 miles an hour, I think that's what it is. Brakes on this is a 300 millimeter disc on the front, single disc, ABS, Bybee brakes, dual pot. The tire is a 190-19, where the standard Himalayan has a 21 inch tire taller tire. This one has a shorter tire that's slightly wider. And that really, uh, it really changes the way the bike handles in town. And we'll talk about that here when we go riding it. Uh, the suspension on the front is seven and a half inches. That's about 190 millimeters. So that's a lot of travel. These are 41 millimeter tubes, by the way, and they're covered. So you don't have to worry about getting bugs or dirt or anything like that. That's, that's, I think they should all be covered in my opinion. On the rear, they've got a 240 millimeter disc with a single pot vibrate caliper. The uh, travel in the rear is 7.1 inches. So up and down here, 7.1 inches. That's about 180 millimeters. It's a monoshock on the rear and it's a linked monoshock. There's, and you can put a longer or shorter one in there to raise or lower the bike. Uh, ground clearance on this bike as it is now is 7.9 inches. That's about 200 millimeters. And that's plenty of ground clearance. Seat height on this bike, again, a little bit less than a Himalayan, 31.3 inches. That's about 179 millimeters. It's also got a different seat. The Himalayan has a two-piece seat, so you have a back pad and then a forward pad. Fuel tank's the same as the Himalayan, about four gallons. That's about 15.1 liters, but here's a good one. This one weighs about 31 pounds less than a standard Himalayan. Weighs about 408 pounds. That's quite a difference. It's something else, but isn't that just a good looking bike? And I love it in this color. This is kind of the Royal Enfield, you know, that's their factory color almost, the red, the gold, and the black. Right now, they have a deal going on these the company Royal Enfield does, where if you buy one, I think they give you the these guards, hand guards, the engine bars for, for the lower of the engines. Um, I think they also give you a pair of uh, Royal Enfield branded gloves and a pair and a Royal Enfield jacket. And this, of course, you know, so here's the engine guards. Um, these I have on my Himalayan and uh, they're at one end, they might on the ends. And you wonder about that, right? Well, I just dropped my Himalayan, <laughs> oh, I don't know, a week ago. And they work just, they work perfectly. I mean, I, they did not break, they were they were just fine. So I, I would say that is a proven product in my mind. Other things that have been added to this bike, I think they added, these were just kind of, you know, the uh, for beauty looking, you know. I don't think that comes part of the free package, but those are there. Himalayan, Royal Enfield is an Indian company and Himalayan is a truly Indian bike. It is designed to ride those kind of roads. You know, it's, it's a rough and tough bike. The other thing about this bike, and the one thing that I really love about mine, I can adjust the valves myself. There's only two valves. I pop the gas tank off. There's two little ports there. You pop them off. In uh, 45 minutes, I can have the valves adjusted and the oil changed. The other thing about a Himalayan, the air filters under this cover. You know, you can just pop it out with a couple of screws. Air, air, air filter comes right out, easy to get at. No, and you can be out in the middle of nowhere and do it. And, uh, Let's jump up here real quick. So here's the Oculus. It's got an analog speedometer. Up here, it's got a fuel gauge that arcs across the top, a gear indicator, a clock, odometer, and then it's got uh, trip one, trip two. Uh, let me, I'm trying to find the button for it. Okay, the button's over here, right here, right here. So if you look right here, watch that number. Trip A, trip B, and odometer. So you've got all those, and that's all manageable from here. And you know, that doesn't seem like it'd be that big of a deal, but uh, my classic has that on the on the uh, other, you know, over here on mine. But it's, it's really a nice thing to have. I can just, you know, going down the road, I can toggle between those things and look at them. Um, other things on this bike, it's got the flash to pass button right there. High lows, the blinkers, pretty good ones. Horn over on this side, we've got uh, the kill switch, hazard lights, 
and the start button, of course, the throttle. I like I like this whole area. This is different from the uh, standard Himalayan in that in the standard Himalayan there is a kind of a structure up here that holds the headlight. The headlight is always pointing in the same direction as the bike, depending. It doesn't it, you know relevant to how the uh, forks are turned. On this motorcycle, that's independent. The headlight is or the, the headlight is part of the uh, fork structure. So as you turn the uh, bike, the headlight turns with it. Uh, also, this housing here, that's cast aluminum. And I, I really give credit to uh, Royal Enfield for doing that because they could have made that out of plastic and I don't think anybody would have noticed. But they really went out of their way to do that. I, I think this whole thing is just a really good thing. Something else I didn't mention. This is the tripper nav system. You tie this in with your phone and uh, it'll give you turn by turn directions. And I've used that a couple times on a couple bikes. I don't have this on any of my bikes, but uh, I've played with it on other bikes and it, it does work pretty well. I was actually pretty impressed with it. Right I, did, I love the I love the whole thing. They're, they're built like a, you know, they're, they're tough. They're, they're a good, good product. They are also like uh, Baxter Cycle, Baxter Cycle here in Marnie, BaxterCycle.com. They sell a bag set for this. I think there's a GB bag set. They sell all kinds of goodies for this, you know, covers for these things, all kinds of add-ons and neat stuff like that. If you, if you go to their website, BaxterCycle.com, they've got all that stuff on there. And uh, they also got their got it in their store here in Marnie. They also got all the uh, Royal Enfield um, clothing, you know, coats, gloves, hats, shirts, all the neat, you know, bags. They've got all kinds of, uh, you know, like backpacks and things like that. Isn't that just a beautiful bike? The engine, by the way, is air and oil cooled. There's the oil cooler down there. I love it. I love it. Hey, you know what we should do? We should go take that hot rod for a spin. Wahoo! I am biased towards uh, Himalayans, so I will tell you right now, I do like this bike. Any Himalayan is my friend. It's one. It's it's literally my favorite overall motorcycle. This one seems to be a much better handling one than the uh, standard one on paved roads, anyway. If you're in the market for a new or used Royal Enfield Triumph or British bike of any type, get yourself down here to Baxter Cycle, BaxterCycle.com. Ask for Jeremy, Mark. Tell them that Fuzzy Biker sent you. Wahoo! Let's do a quick spin test right here. These things turn on a dime. I just love these bikes, and particularly with the 19-inch tire. I've got the 21 on mine, and I just it's it's great doing this, and the 19 is even better. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, this bike runs good. I love this engine. It's it's uh now that's a big truck. It's got all its torque down at the bottom. And I, I just think it's a beautiful thing. It's the transmission, as far as Royal Enfield transmissions go, it's the, a little clunky compared to the uh, newer ones, but it's still a very good transmission. I love mine. I've never had any trouble in 18,000 miles. The motor itself, I mean, look, at it just picks up like a banshee. I, I love it. I think it's got plenty of power for this kind of riding. I think the bike is ideal between um, well, zero to 65, it'll do that all day long, every day. Uh, you can get on the interstate and do 70, 75 if you'd like, probably without any trouble. This one is particularly smooth. I like the way they've, I know they've done something to it. It's a lot lighter feeling than a normal Himalayan because of the smaller front tire. Uh, it also has a slightly shorter wheelbase. I don't think they've changed the geometry of the rake or anything like that, but the suspension certainly is different. I think they've done something there. It's got less travel in both front and rear. And I think you can feel it. It's definitely um, a little more city bike, I think. Still country bike. Big old truck coming from there. Big old truck coming from there. Another one behind it. Are we ever going to make it? Good grief. Why would I buy this bike? Um, if I lived in the city, honestly, if my Himalayan had to be replaced, I would really seriously, I would take one of these for a couple hundred mile ride just to see. I love my Himalayan. There's literally no way I would trade it off for anything right now, but if I had to get a new one, I would definitely experiment with this one. Let's do the quick turn test here. Look at that, huh? Look at that. What a joy. What a joy. This thing is just, it, compared to a normal Himalayan on pavement, it's much more nimble. That is the derailed grill here in Marnie, Iowa. If you ever get this place, give them guys a shot. Uh, this feels like it has a substantial, well, it feels like it has 10% more power than my bike. And that would kind of line up because I think this is about 7% lighter than my motorcycle. And then of course it's got the lighter front end, you know, none of this mass up here. And as far as handling goes, it feels a lot more um, city, you know, a lot more nimble, a lot more, oh, you know, 
that kind of thing. Uh, how is it on gravel? Well, I've driven one on gravel, a couple miles and a little bit of dirt, and it was just fine. I, I think if your primary purpose was gravel, I would look for the Himalayan, the standard. And if your primary purpose, you know, if you're gonna ride in the city all week long and then on the weekend you're gonna do a little dirt, I'd get one of these. This would be a lot, a lot happier. Uh, the suspension on these, I think is just fine. Uh, mine is in stock form, I've never changed it. I think uh, if it ever were to wear out, I might upgrade, but as, as it is now, I just, I don't see any reason to change it. I'm sure this is the same way. I could live with this motorcycle. I think in the line of him, of, in the line of Royal Enfield, I think that in the line of Royal Enfield, this is the bike that deserves everybody's eyes. If you were only going to have one motorcycle for city and gravel and everything else, this would be a mighty fine bike, a mighty fine bike. And you, you know, you can accessorize it out. Now, why would I get, you know, if I only had one, why would I get this over the uh, standard Himalayan? I would say because it's more street oriented. This one is a little number, a little lighter handling. Nothing against the big one, but uh, anyway. No, it's a beautiful thing. The other thing about this motorcycle is you can accessorize the heck out of it. There it is, Baxter Cycle. They've got all the goodies here in stock. All right, my friends, if you all are in the market for a bike like this, get yourself up here to Marnie, Iowa. Baxter Cycle, BaxterCycle.com. Talk to Jeremy and Mark. They can help you out. Wahoo! Alrighty, let's take this hot rod for a spin.